great topic, just uh, something about organization. So unfortunately, because of traffic jams and other factors, and you having a lot of fun uh, yesterday, we're starting a bit later. So please pay attention to your schedule because it obviously will be shifted because of this. And follow your curators. Uh, probably we'll have to cut a bit uh, some parts like lunch, coffee breaks, and let's try to squeeze everything. So we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. This uh, presentation is embargo, so you can film, take pictures, and share it with the community after embargo date. And obviously, we couldn't uh, conduct this summit uh, without CV rework discussion, obviously. Uh, we're going to keep it pretty serious, uh, but I decided that we need proper presentation title, something like this. Uh, and this is the all this is the all shit posting we have in the presentation mostly. The rest will be serious. So uh, again, we will we are going to be your speakers today with Ivan. Uh, Ivan will have some interesting insight, and we'll have Q and A after the presentation. So if you have any questions, just write them down, and after we're done, we'll be able to address them. Uh, the structure of our talk will be this. So first of all, we need to look back a bit the boring part and remember why we actually did the CV rework in the first place. Uh, we also will look at the data, uh, the spreadsheet, because it's still relevant and important. Uh, we also think about what was done wrong, especially with the launch of CV rework and try to understand, to learn some lessons from it. And of course, we'll talk about favorite Flambas topic uh, data versus feedback, data versus experience, data versus fields, and we'll try to understand what's important and where. And yeah, Q&A. Uh, yeah, I actually did the slides with a lot of text so you can take pictures. It's just more convenient for you. I'll comment on some points anyways. So why did we do CV rework? Why did we uh, dive into this big, big uh, challenge with a lot of resources? Uh, money, why do you spend so many, so much time doing this in the first place? Obviously, uh, the class had very low popularity and it was really detached from the main game. It was a completely different genre. We all know it was RTS. Uh, and the problem with the audience was that, yeah, having RTS inside action was good idea on paper. And we were like fans of this idea ourselves. But with time, we understood that basically the skills amount of the skills you have for other classes, they do not really work for CVs, like for the most of the audience, and the detachment is just too way big. Uh, like it's it's about, our game is mostly about positioning, evaluating the map and your surroundings, and obviously RTS, uh, unlike slow shooter, RTS requires a lot of APM, uh, a lot of parallel actions and so on and so forth. And, uh, well, because of low popularity, uh, we all had the situation where you just took uh, defensive AA on cruiser instead of hydro, and then you couldn't see a CV in like five matches. Uh, you wasted your consumable choice. You also could invest some points in captain skills and modernization and still didn't see any carrier. And then, of course, as long as you think, okay, I'm going to switch to hydro and do different build, you go to the match and you have like a midway coming after you. It's, very nice. So in, it's inconsistent presence of uh, the class in battle like leads to these uh, failures in the player's choice of builds. Uh, as for skill gap, like I want to be really clear here, we do not want to remove skill gap. Skill gap is important. We want good players to do good and bad players to do bad. But the point is, the question is how uh, much it difference should be and how uh, it should influence the experience of all other players. So, for instance, if uh, a carrier player does really bad in battle because he's bad, it's okay. But if it leads to the huge disadvantage for his team from the start, this is not so good. And uh, combined with all of these problems, we had really excessive battle influence. Like, carriers often were decisive uh, in many cases. Uh, we also saw that in serious competitive environment, people just spec to, to A a lot and uh, like loss of carrier could really snowball the match. I don't say that it doesn't happen now and it doesn't happen with other classes, but it was excessive in our opinion. 
So let's go into spreadsheet a bit. Uh, first of all is popularity. So I have just some three numbers for you here. It's amount of unique weekly players with at least one battle on CV. Just to be clear, it's not class popularity. We'll go to class popularity later. It's amount of players who actually tried, played the carriers. And we see that the numbers went, like, like spiked to 30%, which means that 30% of our audience, contrary to 15 before rework, actually started playing carriers on the release, which is understandable because it was a completely new design, completely new gameplay, and people were hyped. Now, uh, and now, by now, I mean like last month, basically, it stabilized at 22% of uh, the audience. So now, at least quarter of our players from time to time, at least they play the class. But what about popularity of the class itself? This is a chart, basically, of class popularity. It's amount of battles on each class of the ship. Uh, I have a pointer here. Well, this is the carriers. This is rework, obviously. These are destroyers. You can see that they're correlated, of course. And uh, yeah, this is the general trend from December uh, 18 to July, well, Ju June and July in the future of 19. Uh, you can see the picture, but what's interesting here is Asia. The whole, the whole world, Asia, Asians. So we have, we have, some, we have some ideas of why it happens but we don't have any like complete complete understanding. We have some hypothesis uh, because of like uh, Japanese carriers or because of the audience in, on Asia tends to be younger, and this class is more appealing for younger audience. We have some theories, but for now it's just under investigation. Uh, what's important here for us is that we cannot balance the game for each server independent. We have one game, one game experience. We have come on, like we have. Uh, cross-server clan wars. And while balancing carriers, we need to take into account all servers. For example, this uh, was the reason it was so hard for us, it was one of the reasons, it was so hard for us to introduce cap on carrier numbers. The cap, which would perfectly work on Russian server, on North American server, it would just uh, completely destroy matchmaking queue for Asia. But now it's stabilizing, and as you know, we're introducing even more caps uh, in this update. You have any comments here, Ivan? Okay. Different implementation of what? Of matchmaker? We're not fans of uh, doing this per region because uh, we strongly believe, like, we unify everything across the regions. Uh, we unified, uh, back in the, I think two years ago, we unified premium shop and discounts. We unified rank battles progression. Uh, and uh, our philosophy is that the, exp like the, the rules of the game should be the same for everyone. So we really don't want to pursue different matchmaking and this is why we were waiting for this to drop. And then we introduced uh, a soft cap for carriers in tier 10. And then we're introducing for tier A, basically, in the 085. So, yeah, no separate matchmaking here. So, another metrics I want to discuss is class retention. Uh, some of you probably know what it means, but I'll try to explain it to you anyways, just in case. So, I'll compare the retention of old CV, uh, which, which will be end of uh, 2018, and new CV, which will be like uh, last, last uh, several exciting months we had. And uh, we took all players with no prior CV battles, or players who just didn't play the game for one plus month. So, basically, it's CV, CV newbies for us. Uh, we built week weekly charts. Uh, I'll just explain you how to read them. So retention for week one is always 100%, like 100% of players of these players played a carrier week one. Then we look at week two. What percentage of players still played at least one carrier battle on week two? And then we can, like, the more, the more data we have, the better picture we have on this. Basically, uh, class retention shows the chances of player sticking with the class after he or she starts to play it. 
this is the chart uh, of NA, an example. And basically we have like blue one is new pairs. We can see that although the first weeks are more or less the same, we have better retention here for the whole lifetime. And But this chart is not easy to read because, as I said, week one is always 100%. So it's kind of, the scale is not very convenient. So I made this table for you with difference. This is worldwide difference per week. So as we see, we have some like issues here on week three and four generally. It's slightly worse, but the whole, the whole picture is pretty good. I also want to comment uh, on servers again. So the best CV retention is on Asia, surprise. But the worst uh, is on CFS. So we have some regional discrepancies here. And basically, while all servers have positive trend of sticking players sticking with CVs, uh, Russian server uh, is the server where CVs are the least popular and players are least excited to play them. And of course, we need to keep on researching this. So now we have like six-ish months after rework, right? But we should remember that we had very dramatic changes, especially uh, during the first couple of months. So obviously we need to revisit this chart each month and check out the new data is accumulated. For example, we nerfing, uh, well, effectively we're nerfing carriers in 0.85 with DPS change, and this will affect player retention. We need to check it in one month, two months, and so on and so forth. Uh, skill gap. Uh, so it's it's really a challenging thing to evaluate the skill gap and there are probably many ways to do it but what we tried to do is we took all the player base by percentile and tried to project several battle metrics on it. I'll show you some charts here. So x-axis will be player percentile. What you need to understand here is that to the left there will be like worst players, to the right there will be the best players. And then we look at some stats. The data we took is tier 10 ships from October, November 18 and May, June 19. And we took May, June again because uh, for the first uh, few months of CV rework we did a lot of dramatic changes and this is why the statistics is very volatile. Now we have more or less stable period so we took it to, to check out. And yeah, you, sh you should pay attention to more to the general trend because for example if we have top 10% of players, there are a few of them, and the like, charts will be very volatile just because there are very, very, very little data in there. So, uh, win rate, average win rate. New carriers, old carriers. So what's, what's to see here? The angles, old carriers, basically, worse players played even worse, good players played even better. So it's, it's like right now, we have worse players having better win rate on average, and we kind of nerfed the best, the very, very best players in terms of results. And I will show you it with comparison to other classes a bit later to, for more perspective. But what about absolute damage? It's just a nerf across the board. All types of players, good players, bad players, they started to deal less absolute damage on average. And frags. Death by a thousand cuts, right? But still, old carriers, new carriers, decrease across the board. Spotting damage, not, not that significant, unfortunately, yet, but still, across the board, less spotting damage. And let's check out it with comparison with other classes. Win rate, skill gap with all other classes pre-rework. What's interesting here is that like this is cruisers, battleships, and destroyers, win rate distribution, and it's it's almost it looks like one line. They all all classes are more or less in harmony here, but carriers, old carriers, you, as you can see, bad players just really really did bad compared to other classes, and good players outperform. That kind of means that if you play, if you really want to bump your statistics and win rate, you should learn you should have learned to play old carriers because being a good player, you can have better win rate on old carriers. Then it's just the best. It was the best class to pumping up your stats. But what about now? Like we don't have a lot of like huge amount of battles here, so this chart is a bit like volatile. But still, as you can see, it it just follows mostly follows all other classes here. I think it's it's really important. 
to highlight. So we have win read gap after rework being more or less in harmony with all other classes. Pre-rework, it was really different. Also, we can see that damage, frags, spotting damage dropped across the board for all players. And yeah, just to, to reiterate on this, tier 10, we measured this because tier 10 is always on top. It's the pinnacle of CV power. It's a very good benchmark. But of course, we'll be looking at other tiers and uh, trying to balance it out for all tiers in the game. Do you have anything to add? All right. Then let's try to look at battle influence. More amazing charts here. So when we just started developing the game like five years ago, uh, and then we went to alpha test, we used just average metrics mostly. We had average damage, average win rate. Uh, but of course, with the evolution of the game, with uh, resolving different balance problems, making mistakes from time to time, we tried to, like, to have more scientific and deeper approach to this. So in uh, last, last year, we created uh, like cumulative metrics, which we call battle influence. What's important to understand here that this battle influence, it takes into account relative damage, potential damage, control points A, spotting, and uh, relative spotting damage. The point of this metrics is to compare very different ships because in our games, the, in our game, the classes are very different. And for example, Destroyer has a sm small amount of HP, Battleship hu has a huge amount of HP, and uh, different ships have different priorities, different targets. And the point of this metrics is try to compare them all in terms of how they influence the battle outcome. And even if you, like, I think Ivan will can uh, tell you a bit more about methodology later, if you have questions, but even if you don't agree with methodology fully, what's important to understand that this metric is applied to everyone on the same basis. And it will sh uh, just look at the dynamics, please, at least. Yes, yeah, science. So, carriers, battle influence. It's what I really like to show here is dynamics. So, rework release, like drop, hot fixes, a period of instability. Like, what the hell is happening here? And then, basically, we didn't we didn't do really dramatic changes for this period of time until 084. We did some tweaks, of course, but not that dramatic. And you see that despite of not buffing carriers in any way across the board, I think we didn't do any buffs, we see that the battle influence grew. And this is a learning process of the audience. The audience basically is getting good with the carriers. And it affects, of course, you can see that destroyers are the most affected by carriers. Like, they have almost mirror situations here. But what's I, what I want, want to highlight really a lot for you is engine boost nerf, 084. A lot of people said that it's just, it was not a nerf, or it was not significant, but just see how it broke the trend. It just dropped on this level, and how destroyers started to feel better immediately. Like, okay, they maybe, I don't know about destroyer players, how they, if they felt better, but destroyers as a class in the game, it's like no denying that they got better. And this uh, chart, of course, is not counting the latest DPS AA buff we are having right now in the game, like which happened yesterday. So we'll be very interested to see how it continues to affect. And, uh, you know, another thing I want to highlight is uh, that some people still think that uh, all CV were less cancer. I just want to highlight that there is no place on this chart to see how they were before rework. It's like that, probably. Yeah, I mean, literally no place here. So their battle influence significantly dropped. But let's try to break it down a bit into this metrics. So here we have just relative damage. Follows the same trend, a bit more volatile, but still. As you can see, relative damage significantly dropped. And now it's, yeah, it follows basically the battle influence. Yeah. Uh, I'll add uh, a bit here. Uh, as you see, all classes dropped uh, a bit. That's uh, because uh, that's where the ranked season starts. And so a lot of players uh, go into ranking, and this is only the random battles. Yeah, it's PvP, just just regular PvP random battles. And next. <laughs> That's uh, kind of not very interesting chart, not too exciting, but these are all classes but DD, uh, relative damage taken. Like, nothing changed here. Uh, that doesn't mean that CVs are totally fine. That mostly means that CVs did not, like, screw the whole game, the every ship because the average amount of damage taken is more or less the same. Like, I don't know what to say here. 
honestly. Like it's it, this one is just fine. And here is another interesting chart and another explanation. So bear with me, please. Uh, it's not possible actually to measure fun in numbers, right? We all know that. But the problem is that, as with all other games, the majority of our audience is not socializing with us. They don't even respond to the surveys. They're not interested. They just play. So if we try to measure something in numbers, what do we do? Uh, and this, I think, I think this one we did. Oh, sorry. What the? Yep. Uh, we did to try to see how uh, carriers influence the fun, but I'm not saying like personal fun. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that if this chart is okay, then everything is great and fine. It's mostly about how to measure the effect on the audience which doesn't talk to us in any way. So uh, we have breakdown of like relative breakdown per hours spent between battles in hours. That means that, for example. We have bins one hour, uh, like from zero to one hour, from one to twenty-four hours, 40, uh, forty-eight hours, and so on and so forth. And this is the percentage of battles played with this gap. That means that, well, in, in our game, you you know the battle time in our game. First of all, it means that if the battle is not here, the probably uh, the player just stopped the session, stopped playing this evening, and went to bed. I don't know, or just rage quitted or something. And uh, for like for us as a game who wants to be healthy and wants to bring fun to people, the more battles we have in the first bin, the better, obviously. Because the less the, like the less time player spends between battles, the better. Because he plays more battles in row, he has le longer sessions and so on and so forth. So, this comparison. And this comparison is actually very interesting because it shows the relation uh, between you scoring first in the team and last in the team. So it's the first place in the team for experience, and this is the last place, 12th place. You can see that here we have 66% of battles, and here 57. This is basically the difference uh, of how players react to scoring first and scoring the last. The difference between this is how many battles end after this, and then we, they have break of uh, 24 hours, basically. No, because, because unfortunately or not fortunately, uh, not all people are like you, Flambas. But you know what? In, like in twelve in twelve players team, somebody is going to score the last anyways. We all know that. So sorry, but it's not really relevant. But uh, that's this is just to compare, because we can have this breakdown from different angle. And let's see this. This is the same type of breakdown. But now it depends not on the your score, not on your score, but on the amount of carriers in your battle. Zero carriers, two carriers, four carriers. Again, difference: sixty-two percent, sixty-two percent, sixty-two percent. With some, with some, you know, m minor fluctuations. This is for all classes. Again, the difference here, the difference here. But let's check out the destroyers. Here we have some problem. So for destroyer, there is almost no difference. It's like 65% and 64.7 between having no carriers and two terrors. But four carriers is kind of damaging the session, and probably more players quit after quit the session after having this amount of carriers in the game. And this is actually one of the reasons we are addressing this and we're adding soft caps to avoid the situations where you have four carriers per battle. But I just want you to see the difference that. Still, even even here, even destroyers who suffer the most, scoring scoring the worst place brings people more probably rage and more negative emotions than having four carriers in the game, or they are just masochists who just keep playing no matter what. Um, uh, I led a bit about the uh, experience place. <clears throat> it's uh, mostly linear, uh, so like you see the difference between 60, 60 and uh, fifty seven. It's like 10%, uh, you can just uh, like uh, linearly put a line and uh, the like place in, the, in between will be something like 60, 62%. So it doesn't matter if AFK or not, it's just a linear trend. And I think this will be one of the li latest charts. Uh, 
not trying to tell, not trying to say that uh, some posts on Reddit were irrelevant, but still, a lot of people said that like I'm playing now, I'm playing just one battle per year. I used to play like ten battles per day because the game is not fun. It's the trend of average battle per users per week and per month for the whole year. I don't have really much comment here. I just have this Christmas tree because here's a spike. And we have this spike every year because we every year we have great tradition of introducing a lot of activities on Christmas, a lot of grinding, and of course player activity goes up. Also, it kind of corresponds with uh, weather in most of our regions because when it's summer, people prefer to have a walk more. When it's winter, they play the game more. But still, it's just stable trend and nothing really changed here. So, uh, to finally be done with spreadsheet part, it's just some conclusions here. So we have popularity and retention got better. We have shorter skill gap, although there's still something to work on. We have dramatic drop in CV battle influence compared to other classes. Uh, we see that destroyers do have problems, of course, because they are influenced the most by carriers. And on a lot of charts, we can see like mirror situation where something gets better for carriers, the same gets worse for destroyers, obviously. Uh, on the scale of the game, sorry to say that, guys, but we don't did not ruin it because ruining the game means this goes down, this goes down, and so on and so forth. In terms of the whole game, I'm not I'm not saying about fun and personal experience at the moment. We didn't ruin it. However, uh, I want to talk now about what did we really do wrong, uh, and what do we need to do now. So first of all. Let's remember some history, the mistakes of launching the CV rework and beta test. Um, this may not seem important uh, for you, maybe because uh, <laughs> you don't have this perspective uh, like of developers and you don't know what we had to work on, but f this is just our experience with the rework launch. So first of all, we launched the beta test with a lot of stability issues. It was really bad from our side and uh, this meant that for the first few iterations of beta test, when we already let the critical mass of people in, we had to concentrate on fixing the bugs instead of tweaking the gameplay, which is really bad because people were expecting us to tweak the gameplay from the start to try to do something on their feedback, but we had to spend several versions just by fixing the technical stuff, which was not really a wise decision. We also had uh, heavy balance changing uh, with very high frequency afterwards because we didn't have much time to according to our plans and uh, like we had to do many changes and pe not all people had time to apprehend them and give us feedback. Uh, and one of the biggest problems I think that was that after, after beta test, CV rework was just released. Uh, if you remember, I talked uh, about it yesterday on my NDA presentation, I cannot name, but I mentioned this, that the majority of game changed overnight for most people because most people didn't visit the beta test. They came, they see completely different experience, they see some uh, interesting things like Hakuru scoring like 400k damage. Wow. And uh, I still think that despite of our efforts, we didn't give enough informational support. We didn't give enough explanation on how new mechanics work. We should do better in his. Um, then I want to comment a bit on the factor of balancing on life. Balance, like no one really likes balancing on life except us maybe. Uh, why? Unfortunately, uh, we don't know the way how to recreate proper player behavior on beta test and on public test. Unfortunately, many tweaks can be done only on live just because the amount of data and behavior of players. It's relevant, it's on topic, it gives us data to make decision. And uh, yeah, people learn really fast. For example, slingshots. Don't remember them happening on beta test, honestly. Pre-drops, no, but they appeared after rework was released, after the majority of audience started to play the CVs and explore the class. And this is what I mentioned in my waterline video like several months ago, and it, it happened. And uh, I think it's really bad on, was bad on our side that we still did not est estimate properly the amount of work we had to do after the rework, because now it's past uh, six months past, we hope to like be done with it completely by that time. But we're still doing some changes and we still need to like, correct the balance at some points and you'll, you'll learn about it soon. So the evaluation was not perfect, obviously. 
this is just lesson, the development lesson for us. I, I really hope we don't get to uh, make this huge change to the game uh, in the nearest future. And uh, I don't see we doing this, but us doing this. But whenever we need to do something that big, we probably will try to remember this lesson. So focus more on stability. Let the players in smaller group. Let them give them more time to experience these changes. Focus on all classes evenly because on CV rework beta test it was really difficult to focus on the surface player uh, experience uh, like regular sh regular class player experience because everybody just wanted to play CV of course and this is this is very interesting I think lesson that we should find the way uh, if we do such big changes we should find the way to let the players the whole audience to try the new gameplay the new features on live server without downloading some test client without going to public test but without changing the game. So like maybe some sandbox within the live server. I think it's technically feasible. And if we need to do it ever again, some huge change like this, we'll try to do it in this way. And yeah, just take more time and introduce content at slower pace so players have more time to react and give feedback. Later, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's just keep it. Uh, so because... I told you because this is your favorite part, and I wrote it specifically for you. So I want to be <laughs> really clear here. With all the spreadsheets I show you, we understand that players do not play spreadsheets that play the game. Like We understand it, and we play the game too. And the challenge here is to properly take emotions, feelings, and data into account. Uh, also, I need to highlight that we are all humans, and without... Uh, without defining, defining any uh, mistakes done with CV rework, I still want to highlight that naturally all people are resistant to change. So this is the challenge. When you have the big change, you need to define, did you do right? What did you do wrong? What's the real feedback? What's emotions? Maybe, uh, maybe it's more relevant, maybe it's less relevant. It was a big challenge and it will be a big challenge for us because people tend to overreact on the one hand, on the other hand, like if a lot of people overreact, then something happens and we need to look into this and evaluate what's wrong. So, what's next? What do we do now? Uh, in this update released like yesterday, uh, we, as you know probably, we changed AADPS. Uh, and yeah, the, the whole point right now that we were, we was co we were concentrated a lot on balancing uh, and this is more about feeling. What do we want to work on during the next updates? What's the biggest complaint? The feeling of counterplay, lack of counterplay. So we designing several changes which should heavily contribute to this feeling. And the first change is already live. It's AADPS change. Like I, I read Reddit. Reddit told me that planes die faster now and more consistently. That's a good thing. Uh, also, Work in progress, but hopefully next update we'll introduce one more DPS change to make DPS damage be applied more even uh, quicker, more frequently, which will, on the one hand, unfortunately, remove the difference, the like conceptual difference between large caliber AA guns, which apply damage once per like four, five seconds maybe, and machine guns, which is kind of a bit not not too historical, but okay, we can live without it. The, the best thing here is that if even if the plane will just dip into your long range AA, it will start taking damage immediately. So there will be no incon it will be less inconsistency in AA. But what's the most important, I think, about counterplay is priority sector rework. We are redesigning the priority sector mechanic basically almost from the scratch. We want to empower a player with better AA, and hopefully you will be able to try this new mechanic today on the playtest. And I was the whole the, the whole the whole presentation and the, the playtest of priority sector is embargo, so you can record and share it after embargo date. A few days. So we aim here. Uh, that means that. If something ter goes terribly, terribly wrong from technical side, it may be delayed, but I don't think it's likely to be delayed more than one update. Uh, we have playable priority sector already right now. 
if the testing of it goes well, it will be integrated into 087 update and it will go on public test and go live. If something happens, some critical bugs we don't have time to resolve, we take our time, resolve it, and it will go one update later. It's just like with every other feature. But this is not design. This is not like just ideas floating around. This is what we're already doing, working on, and you'll be able to experience hands-on. So I am really tired of talking, so I want Ivan to tell you about uh, the mechanics a bit, if you don't mind, Ivan. And I'll switch the slide for you. What is the new AA sector? <coughs> So, uh, first of all, the new priority sector will not be uh, hided under tilde. Um, you will be able to just, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, just click uh, on the side of the ship and then the priority sector goes up on that side. <coughs> um, back to mechanic. Uh, it uh, rewards you with the uh, instant damage uh, to the planes, which is uh, not uh, in any way um, uh, dependent on uh, the AA value. It will only depend on the current HP of the squadron itself. So it will just chunk uh, some uh, HP percent, uh, like say 5% from, uh, uh, from the squadron. And most likely it will uh, kill one or two planes from the squ full squadron. Uh, after that, it uh, gradually boosts uh, the EA to some uh, maximum level, say like 150%. Um, and it stays at this, uh, this uh, level for some time, like say uh, five, 10 seconds. Uh, after that, it uh, just goes down to 100%, and then you can't, uh, for some time, there is a sector cooldown where you can't uh, switch the sector again. Uh, cooldown, it, it, all of this is class dependent, and uh, like cooldown, say like 5 to 10 uh, seconds. Uh, the whole cycle is uh, 20 seconds for and now. Typically, destroyers get to switch it faster, of course. We'll, we'll, we'll a bit, uh, let, let Ivan finish and we'll comment on this. Yeah, also we wanted to rework uh, the manual AA skill a bit. Uh, so uh, that it will uh, just increase this initial damage. Uh, quite significantly, but at the cost of uh, the DPS bonus. So basically, your mechanic will work the, just this. You click uh, the sector, it uh, deals some damage based on the squadron health, and then there is a cooldown, like say 20 seconds or something like that. Can I comment? Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm couch des game designer, Wanna, wanna be one, but I never can do it anyways. Uh, I want to highlight several things. So it's percentage of current squadron HP, which means if you click priority sector on full squadron, it can probably shoot down one, two planes. If it's just one attack wing or for three planes, three planes, for example, three planes with 1000 HP each, it's 3000 HP, it won't, it won't be as painful. But from the full squadron, from nine planes, it will be 9000 HP, the amount of HP is more considerable. It doesn't depend on your AA stats at all. It's, and probably it will be tuned per class. Uh, and also important thing about percentage is that it's kind of irrelevant in terms of up tiering, down tiering, because it's just percentage. It's, in, it's honest interaction in percentiles. Uh, yes? Yeah, it's uh, one of the risks, but uh, I guess we'll manage it. Um. Honestly, uh, the uh, like what we really don't like about pre-dropping is not the fact of people pre-drop, but the fact that it just looks dumb. Like you I'm bombing water. Wow. Uh, if it's if we consider it in the future uh, an okayish element of the game, we may even think of introducing a button to send some wing home because it's managing your resources. If you are sending some wings back home, you should understand what you're doing and why. Like, you have less planes, you have less opportunities to attack, and yeah, Ivan wants to interrupt me right here. Yeah, I'll also comment a bit about this, because uh, 
actually we're moving more to the um, planes being your resources that you have to manage and because the a becomes a lot more consistent more predictable and thus uh, yeah having like a button that you can uh, ma uh, send back some of the attack waves is fine because you actually will be um, you will lose some attack power because the A is more consistent now. And so you will lose time because you, if, if you pre-drop everything and attack with just one wing, sacrificing, was you still need to take off another squadron back there, bring it to the target, and you're still kind of slowing down your pressure a lot. And also, another thing is very important here, that uh, unlike current implementation, the ADPS bonus starts to build up immediately after you press the button, so it gives you more immediate effect. And in terms of player skill, I think uh, it will be more about trying to predict where will your will where will the enemy planes will be when your AA is at maximum power, and probably it will be interesting element of skill because when this is reached, probably you want the planes to be in your medium AA range because it's the strongest. So we expect a lot of interesting play around here. Mm, that, that is also true, but uh, that's why the current uh, HP squadron. So this immediate uh, damage is like reduced each time you do it. And also, I mean, playing against division of uh, three uh, Musashes on the cruiser is not too... Like, it's, it requires coordination anyways. And of course, uh, these values we showed you is work in progress. Uh, and they will be balanced according to the test. But this is the biggest change uh, coming to carry gameplay in the nearest future. But we also have another topic about spotting because we didn't address it. So uh, I want you to understand really clearly if you remember this uh, battle efficiency chart where our insignificant <laughs> change to engine boost dropped the battle efficiency, the battle influence so much. Uh, we don't want to nerf spotting right now because we have AADPS improvement, next update AADPS improvement, next update priority sector, and everything, every change makes A stronger and more consistent. So uh, if we nerf spotting right now in any way, by mechanics or by settings, uh, we can just drop the carriers below everything else, which is not uh, desirable. But uh, still thinking, uh, thinking uh, for several updates ahead, we're conducting several design tests. I'm not sure, maybe we even shared some of it in DevBlock later, lately, but anyways, we're conducting several design tests with tweak mechanics of spotting to see how it works and maybe it will be needed in a few updates. We also are absolutely okay with addressing the spotting uh, by tweaking it or by changing how it works using some community ideas or some coming up with some new ideas, but not now. We need to get through uh, this first and to actually see how it works. Because it will have cumulative effects and uh, we'll see what amount of changes are needed. So, uh, conclusions. We think you may agree or disagree, but this is our logic. So, CV rework was needed because part of the game didn't properly work at all. It was a huge challenge, like remaking a huge part of the game after four years of release uh, and designing it from scratch. We did have really bumpy start. We did some organizational mistakes and we had a well-deserved criticism from players. Uh, but still, looking at audience, looking at the amount of battles, looking at uh, these metrics, uh, like we are fine, fine like yellow dog in the burning room, but we are fine. Uh, right now we need to concentrate on the biggest issue from the community, which is contraplay and the feeling of contraplay. And this stuff will help a lot, I think. We'll see what to do needs, uh, what, what needs to be done then. Uh, with spotting, we're kind of on, on the fence right now. We will wait a bit to see how A changes affect this. And finally, uh, and again, for Columbus, Spreadsheets are important, but they are not more important than player perception and feedback. We understand that, and we will keep listening to you guys to make the game better. Thank you.
Uh, let's have Q and A, but just just uh, let's keep it uh, organized because this is we're recording this, so we can share it with you after summit, so you have some footage. And each question should be in microphone because we record the sound from microphone. So please raise your hands, and we'll give you the the, the opportunity to ask. Right. Um, the spreadsheets did show that the CV average damage is still the highest across the board, and the influence on the battle was apparently still the highest. Um, I have to ask, is this uh, what you're intending? Is this your goal, to have this class that already has such safety and utility to also be the highest damage dealer across the board? The spreadsheet, um, yeah, it does say that, but uh, what it doesn't say is uh, it it based it is based on what happened at the end of the battle. So like what happened uh, in the full battle, but it doesn't capture uh, really what happens inside the battle based on like timestamps. Because there obviously is uh, some point in the battle where it is decided, and like say there, uh, uh, we think that there might be. Um, at least some amount of damage uh, from CV uh, being in this uh, not relevant area. Like, say, when there are a uh, couple ships left and they, well, the carrier is uh, more like powerful against single targets. And so, yeah, it can, uh, in, the, in the late game, where it is mostly decided but still not ended, it can uh, ra wrap up some more damage, which is uh, w which will be seen in this uh, battle influence graphics, and uh, we're actively trying to get uh, our hands on this data because uh, as th this data like there's huge amounts of it, and there's uh, just like some technical problems with storing it and uh, capturing it. But we really hope to get uh, to the point where we really understand why we have um, the battle influence like, like um, clearly um, bigger than the other classes, but the win rate distribution stays uh, like mostly the same uh, because like uh, the win rate, uh, like the battle influence, uh, like uh, uh, this um, much of a battle influence uh, would, uh, naturally correspond to a more, more skill di difference. Um, but we don't really see that. And that's why we're trying to investigate it. Uh, up to some point. But isn't a lot of the damage also incredibly powerful damage? Like, doesn't the carrier have the highest cap reset rate of all classes as well? Yeah, and it, it is captured in the battle influence matrix. Yeah, um, and DD damage, it's the only class that can do it consistently. I mean, I don't think you can just neglect the damage as unimportant because it can strike I, anything. I don't neglect it, I just like state what our, what our current view of this is. Um, as you see, we drop the battle influence already and uh, I'm sure it will drop more with uh, the DPS change in 8.5, so we're working on it. Yeah, my, yeah, my question was, is your goal to drop it to the level of the other classes? <clears throat> um, our goal is to, like, yeah, we we want to for it to be uh, closer to the other classes, uh, sure, but we also always need to keep uh, an eye out on the CV popularity, because uh, we don't want to uh, make it an uncomfortable to play at all. And that's also like, uh, we've seen this in the charts and popularity that this engine boost affected it. And so uh, we'll need to find ways how to affect uh, the uh, uh, battle influence of carriers and at the same time uh, not make playing carriers like a super unfun experience. But doesn't it kind of sound like you're artificially boosting popularity by making the class stronger than the others? Mm, no, we we didn't uh, like uh, because we already are dropping it and we intend to drop it and we showed it to you. So uh, it's just that some tweaks may be more painful than others and that's what I'm saying. 
Like we we need to find tweaks that are less painful to playing in the class, but at the same time affect the battle influence. Okay, so we're talking about a slew of A improvements to make A more consistent and to empower surface players to be able to shoot down carriers. Nowhere in that discussion did I hear you guys talk about what you hypothesize would be the impact on the CV playing experience, because that's concerning. Once again, I raise the same problems as I've, uh, as I've always done, which is there should always be play, counterplay, and then counter counterplay. The problem I see always with the way you guys do CV sort of age balance changes is it's always like, okay, well, we've got the play, and here's the counterplay, but what is the CV supposed to do? When you say, like, let's go and take 5% HP off of your aircraft, how do I mitigate this at all besides, okay, well, I'll just send smaller squadrons out. Like, is that it? Is that, like, the end of what I'm supposed to do? Like, is, what am I as a carrier player, hypothetically, supposed to do when the opposing thing that's playing against me is just a number. Like, it's not a player, it's a number. What am I doing? What am I playing? That's what I said um, a bit earlier. It's uh, about managing your resources. Your planes are your re resources. So you basically, like, uh, you choose targets at which you want to attack and uh, evaluate uh, how much of the damage you will get from that. And that's your tactical play, your decision. Like, that, that's what you're playing. As well as uh, the, then the drops uh, and how amount of damage you will deal to the target. That's what you're playing. So you're picking a target, knowing that you will lose some of the planes, and keeping in mind how much you need to deal like X amount of damage to that target. Okay, but as any other class in the game, let's hypothetically say, as a battleship, if I am going to go into a trade, I understand that if I go into a trade, I can angle at a certain angle to mitigate a potential return fire. So then I have some way to mitigate the other player. The other player also has some way to mitigate what I'm doing. So therefore, it becomes a challenge of who better executes the maneuver, who better executes their positioning. If I'm playing just with a number generator that always says, every time you come to attack me here, you lose this many planes. I'm not playing a game. I'm playing against a number and then just simply saying, OK, everything just comes down to another spreadsheet. At what point am, is this a gameplay thing? And at which point am I just playing a spreadsheet? Because if I'm playing a spreadsheet, I might as well just go play with Microsoft Excel. It's much easier. Um, you're playing with the uh, first uh, flag bubbles that uh, deal, uh, although they may be mitigated and that's part of the gameplay, they deal quite significant amount of damage um, to planes. Uh, that's the first part. And the next part is, uh, you can uh, uh, try to evade this damage by uh, uh, actually coming uh, coming from uh, like the terrain uh, because then the AA won't see you and th thus it again it's about picking your targets and when to strike them uh, as well as uh, mitigating the damage from the bubbles. Hello. Yeah. Okay. So the first question is like. You said your goal is to uh, increase the uh, CV population, and I mean, is that goal achieved? Your goal is to increase the CV population. Is that, I mean, is it, do you have a standard of which kind of CV population you want to achieve? One of the goals was to increase the population, increase. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. like we are okay at the numbers we end up with right now. Okay. But the point is that while keeping all this balance in mind, fun in mind, class interaction in mind, if it drops to this level, from product point of view, it will be just waste of a lot of resources. And oh. like, okay. if 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 the same amount of people play carriers, but we just we work everything, what's the point? So we don't want to drop it uh, really lower, but. Uh, this this level, like this this latest trend, is okay for us. We don't want it to skyrocket as well, of course. Okay. That's fine. Like, and as I said, the fact that right now almost quarter of the audience plays, as you see, the popularity of carriers is not like quarter of the popularity. No, but quarter of players on regular basis they included the carriers in their roster, so it's more diversity for each player. It's okay. Okay. So the following question is like, 
actually we are seeing like very similar things happen for like pre rework. So you are buffing AA so much, like each each version. And so are you like we I think, I think we are expecting that the C V population is dropping. Yes, it's a uh, it's a risk. We evaluated uh, the AA change on 0.85 PTS as we could, but as I mentioned before in the presentation, with this limited test environment, it's not so easy to evaluate everything. So if by any chance on some tiers or on some specific carriers, this 0.85 change will take excessive, uh, will have excessive effect, uh, we will be ready to dispatch some hotfixes in the middle of the update. So we will be watching, like we, <laughs> Ivan will be watching the stats very, very closely. And if any problems uh, pop up with this change, we will compensate somehow. So we need to keep it balanced. We don't want to hammer CVs into the ground. We want to hammer them to the acceptable levels, which everybody can be more or less happy with. So then the following question after the following question, like you are buffing AA, but you are not giving anything to CV, like uh, prepar uh, preparation time, buff, no thing. But your, the plan here, it's obviously will be more, right? You will lose more plans, but you don't give CV more plans. That's uh, what we can tweak. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. And then uh, second thing with the 8.5, we also um, kind of buffed the CV uh, um, speed when they're uh, trying to reduce the speed on force edge. That mm -hmm. means that the planes uh, will have uh, it, it will be easier for for a plane to move uh, its um, prediction and maneuver more with the forsage. So that's the aspect uh, that we're buffing. It's, uh, it, may not see, uh, as a, it may not seem as a big one, but we already saw that the engine boost nerf, while it wasn't seen as a huge one, it actually affected a bit. So uh, and in 8.5, we're trying to kind of revert some of this and uh, to make uh, Playing the carrier is more comfortable. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Next one. On the same topic, it, it went from 15% almost to 30, and now it's leveled out around 22 or so. So every time any kind of buffed AA is obviously going to affect it in a negative. Do you guys have a critical mass percentage that you want to keep it at or above? 18%, 19% for. Yeah, for players. I mean, because uh, basically if it gets unpopular, you're going to buff it or nerf AA. And then, uh, you know, it seems like kind of a trade off in a way. We certainly don't want to drop this B uh, like lower than pre rework numbers. Yeah, yeah. In terms of play if, if more players will include carriers in their roster, but they play them rarely and the population is stable, then it's fine. But we, of course, we don't want to drop it and we'll monitor it very closely. Like play, like having having the class for small amount of players who gen generate a lot of battles doesn't make sense to us, really, because it will lead to the to the exact problems that uh, happened before we work. Thank you. Um, okay, so all these changes that are coming to the AA. I mean, they seem really strong. Uh, I don't have like anything to say, oh my God, oh my God. It's quite the contrary. I think it's going to be very, very ruthless for the CVs. Um, I mean, we've kind of been all oppressed for so long that I'm definitely going to enjoy a couple of patches of this, just murdering planes. Uh, but the difference, basically the same topic, is it's about, what, 7% more popular now than pre-rework. Only you know how much you invested, time and effort and all of this. And with the next couple of patches, it will probably drop even more. Is this even going to be worth it? And do you maybe consider changing the focus of the CVs finally to not be the uh, destructor? of navies and be more focused on scouting, like reward the one thing that they are really truly masterful at, the scouting. Oh, we have Sergi Vorobio joining us. You want to? Sorry. 
sorry, but you need to speak into mic because we're recording from the mics. So repeat okay. once again, please. So I just, just, I just don't like when uh, people are playing with numbers. Seven percent, uh, not out of one hundred percent, but it was like give me the graph. Too many, too many slides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was fifteen. Now it's twenty-two. So it's uh, it's literally fifty percent comparing to what we had before, and that's kind of noticeable. It's not seven percent out of player base. It's it's uh, it, it's it it doubled in the beginning, and now it's uh, one and a half comparing to what we had before. Just to be on the same page with numbers. It is considerable. But this will plummet even further. With the upcoming changes, I'm not sure. I can't you know, say for sure like how ruthless it's going to be, but I think it's going to be pretty ruthless for all the CV players. I have been playing carriers since forever as a hobby, inside of a hobby, if you want to put it. And I do occasionally enjoy to do exactly what you did here, like make people play it at least a couple of games. Uh, but I'm not really sure it's going to be <laughs> enjoyable. I think, I think that's a valid concern. Uh, I think we already answered it honestly by saying that we will keep looking for uh, any fluctuations and we'll, ready, we'll be ready to apply, first of all, these numbers are work in progress about the like severity of the changes. Second is we'll be keeping eye on the things. And third is I just want to highlight, oh my God, I need to make index next time. So uh, I want to highlight that Basically, this change is important. This change is very important. This, honestly, I, I, I wrote here, it's myth mostly because this uh, AA uh, damage application rate is mostly about the perception on first fire contact when the plane dips into a long game. It's not, like, I don't believe that this will drop carriers consistently. We'll have one update to absorb things and apply some changes. This is mostly just about feels. I don't think it will affect the efficiency a lot, this one change. This is important, and this is as well, but this is mostly about... I was just yeah. uh, mentioning about the whole three things to come. Like, when you're done with this... Yes. This is why it's written like here that <laughs> we will be waiting with spotting for now, and we'll be very careful. But thank you for your concern. Uh, we'll try not to nerf carriers into the ground. And, yeah, thank you. Uh, we have time for one more question, guys. And sorry for, for hurrying, uh, we will be able to talk. Uh, we have dinner, Ivan will join us. If you don't have a question answered, we'll be able to talk more today. So don't worry about it. First of all, big thanks for taking us through all the data and everything. That was really great to see. Um, more uh, to the point, the question that I have is uh, kind of twofoldish. Uh, one, will you then, after this, start looking at tier six and tier eight balance? Um, and tweak that, uh, where are you guys at with, with that kind of balance in your mind? Um, and then when we first started the rework, there was talk about reintroducing other aircraft carriers at either an odd tier or a, a second line, so to speak. Is there any progress on that? Uh, on the second line, uh, currently we're working on some prototypes uh, for now, but this that's as much as we can say right now. And uh, regarding the other tiers, um, we see that uh, in efficiency, the tier six uh, is um, mostly where we we'll want it. So it's quite possible that with these changes, we will uh, need to buff it. And same goes for tier four. Um, but the tier eight uh, the right now is, uh, is kind of a problem uh, and uh, so, uh, so, I'm not sure we will need any tweaks to tier 8 at all, but we're obviously monitoring all the tiers uh, and uh, we treat them differently, obviously, because they're, uh, like, uh, the difference relative to the tier of like tier 4 carriers and tier 10 carriers is significant there. Just like, uh, the problem with tier 8 carriers for, for us, the main problem is that, as you all know, tier 8 nowadays gets up tier pretty bad. And uh, a lot of CV players complain about having tier 10 matches as well. But most of all, most of all player base who plays at tier 8 have equal amount of tier 10 battles. 
The problem is that carers uh, right now are the best class to, to up-tier. So they suffer least from the up-tiering. And relative to other tier eight ships, uh, like we probably, as Ivan said, we won't need to remedy it a lot. But working on tier eight matchmaking is separate thing, and we're working on it as well. And when it changes, and it will change, and it will improve in the nearest future, I hope we will see the relative situation again. Because we took tier ten as benchmark, because it's really like it gives you really good results because of its tier ten. On tier eight, situations will change because of matchmaking too. So. It's it's kind of tricky. So if you don't mind, I was going to ask a quick follow up about the plus one minus one no. matchmaking talk. <laughs> but your description there about CVs having the most impact is, yeah, is so, that part of the reason why so, you're not. So for matchmaking, uh, we do have some information, uh, but it will be NDA. We'll we'll talk about it later. But short, long story short, we appreciate the problem. We've been working on improving the matchmaking, especially for tier eights. But it's, it's not about having plus minus one. It's about distribution across battle tiers. And it is also about having the amount of tier eight ships in tier 10 battles being the lonely tier eight with all tier tens, uh, addressing all these problems. But none of these uh, solutions for now includes plus one. It's about, it's about matchmaking algorithms and making player comfortable conditions in terms of amount of tier tens he sees. So it's slightly different, but no, 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 no plus one yet. Sorry. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's go. Uh, well, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you can have some coffee, and the next presentation will be shortly. Thank you very much.